Good morning. Good morning. So glad that you are here with us. I want to welcome you to Oak Hill Baptist Church. It's a joy um, to be together, especially if you're a visitor here with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for, for deciding to worship here with us today. I want to encourage you, if you are a visitor or if you've been visiting recently with us, uh, there should be a card that looks like this somewhere in front of you, in the row in front of you. Um, this is our visitor card, and, and we just simply ask that you just fill out what you can on that. Um, just to let us know who you are, that you are with us today. Um, it's also got a place um, where you can uh, list prayer requests uh, so that we can be uh, praying over you. Um, would love for you to fill this out, and you can drop it in the offering boxes in the back of the sanctuary when you leave this morning. Um, we just want to uh, connect with you and see how we can better serve you and minister to you and your family. And so I encourage you, if you hadn't already, be sure to fill that out before you leave today. Um, but we're, we're, we're so excited to be able to gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ and to rejoice in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, if you're willing and able, let's, let's stand together and sing. declares um, in Psalm 19 how beautiful and wonderful the Word of God is. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And it continues on from there saying, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. And then listen to this church. In keeping them, there is great reward. We have the great privilege of gathering together under the word of God that God has spoken to us 
What an incredible grace. And so let's continue to worship in light of that. church would you would you join me in singing that one more time but instead of just singing let it be our prayer that as we prepare to hear the word of God God speak to us speak to us let's, let's sing it word of God speak would you pour down my grave washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. That's 
it's our prayer, Lord, that you would speak, that you would move in a powerful way through your spirit today. Lord, speak to our hearts the words that we need to hear. Lord, it is a, it is a miracle every time your word is proclaimed because there's needs great and small and as various as they can be in this room. There are things that each of us need to learn and to grow in and to repent of that others may not. And yet your word is powerful. And there's great wisdom to be had. And Lord, so we come. And we humbly sit at your feet to learn from you, to hear your words, and to respond as you would have us. Lord, help us by your spirit to do just that. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Lord, as our children go to children's church, that is our prayer over them. Lord, that as, as the word of God is being instilled into their hearts and minds, Lord, that you would begin to shape them and to mold them more and more into the image of your son. Lord, we pray blessings upon them. And Lord, we pray blessings upon this time in this place. Lord, that you would be glorified and that we would be the church you have called us to be. And it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Great is thy faithfulness. Music is a great part of worship, and I appreciate the music that we have every Sunday. Caleb and Jackie and all of you that participate in the music, we appreciate it so very much. More valuable than gold. Our society, our culture today says that if you've got the gold, You've got it all. 
If you've got the gold, you've got it all. But it doesn't really work out that way. I read about people that win the lottery, and they win several million dollars, and then a few years later, they go bankrupt or their family gets all messed up because the family wants part of the money, or their friends come and their friends ask to help them with some venture and they don't do it and so they lose a friend. No, I don't think if you've got the goal, you've got it all. The Bible mentions several things that are more valuable than gold. And I've selected just four of them for us to think about today. First, wisdom is more valuable than gold. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 16, the Bible says, Get wisdom, how much better it is than gold. Now, wisdom biblically is not just a bunch of facts. It's not having a lot of knowledge. It's not a bunch of information. If you want to know what wisdom is biblically, turn back in the book of Proverbs to chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways, and he will guide you on the right paths. Now that's wisdom. It's trust in God. It's having God in your life. And if you look down a little bit further in that third chapter of Proverbs, verse 13, happy is a man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding, for she is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. In verse 19, the Lord founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding. By his knowledge, the watery depths broke open and the clouds dripped with dew. In God, there is wisdom. When King David died, Solomon, his son, became the king. And God gave Solomon a great opportunity. He let him wish for whatever he wanted, request whatever he wanted. Now, you, if God gives you that opportunity, you know God can give you anything. But Solomon said he wanted wisdom. He wanted to be able to go in and out before the people. He wanted to have the wisdom to be a good king in Israel. And so God was so impressed with that when he could have asked for great riches and great fame, and he asked for wisdom, that God gave him wisdom, and also fame and riches. Now Solomon messed up late in life, but he made the right choice then, wisdom. Now the Bible condemns foolishness. There are several places in the scripture where God condemns foolishness. I want to just suggest to you a few. In Psalm 14 verse 1, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And in Proverbs 9, verse 10, the scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that same statement is made in the 111th Psalm and verse 10. Knowing God is the beginning of wisdom. Trust him. You remember Jesus told about a rich farmer. He had had a very good crop that year so much that his barns wouldn't hold it all. And so he said, well, I'll just build bigger barns and I'll put all of this I made this year into my barns. 
And God came to him, you remember, and God said, you're a fool because tonight you'll die. Then whose will all these things be? You see, gold isn't all of it. If you've got the gold, you haven't got it all because God can take it any time. Now, in Christ Jesus is wisdom. I want to share a verse from Colossians with you. Listen to this, Colossians 2, 3. Jesus is the key that opens all the hidden treasures of God's wisdom. Jesus is the key that opens all the hidden treasures of God's wisdom. The chairman of the board of a large corporation went to see the president in his office and he walked into the outer office and he told the receptionist I want to see the president and the receptionist said well I'm sorry sir but you can't see him right now and this angered the chairman of the board He said, what do you mean? I'm the chairman of the board and I want to see the president. So he went and he opened the door and he walked right into the president's office. He got one step in and he stopped. Because he saw the president down on his knees praying by his desk. He quietly turned around, shut the door, stepped outside and said to the receptionist, does this happen often? And the receptionist said, every morning. And the chairman of the board said, no wonder I come to him for advice. Wisdom is more valuable than gold. Now secondly, the Bible tells us that a good name is more valuable than gold. In Proverbs 22 and verse one, A good name is to be chosen over great riches. A good name. That involves good character. It involves a good reputation. It involves integrity. When a name is mentioned, something always comes to your mind. Somebody mentioned somebody that you know, somebody you've heard of, a picture is going to come in your mind. What do people think about when your name is called? We mentioned the name of Hitler, one of the most evil men who ever lived, responsible for the execution of over six million Jews. And it is said that he was responsible for the deaths of 11 million people. An evil, evil man. That's what comes to mind. But we mentioned Billy Graham. And we think about the man that preached to more people than anybody in history. We think about all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who came to know the Lord through the ministry of Billy Graham. That's what we think about. Judas, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Then his conscience got to hurting him. He went back to the scribes and Pharisees and tried to give them the money back. And so they wouldn't take it. And so he threw the money down and ran out and hanged himself. Judas, nobody names their child Judas anymore. But what about us? What do we people think about when your name, my name is mentioned? This past Wednesday, when I drove home after prayer meeting, went to, and I walked into the den, my phone rang, and a lady on the other end of the line told me about the death of a woman. I had been that woman and her husband's pastor years ago. And when her name was mentioned, a memory came immediately into my mind. When my wife, Virginia, died, 
I took two or three weeks off, and then I went back to the church, and that Sunday, that lady came to me, and she said, you are going home for lunch with me and Homer, so you don't have to go home and eat by yourself. So when I heard her name on the phone Wednesday, that memory popped into my mind. Memories come to us when people are mentioned. The founder of Chick-fil-A, Truett Cathy, told his children that when he died, he wanted this verse of scripture put on his tombstone. A good name is to be chosen over great riches. And they did that. That inscription, that epitaph, that verse of scripture is on Truett Cathy's tombstone. A good name is to be chosen over great riches. I've had the opportunity to talk with people that knew him personally, that worked for him. And they say that he was a man of integrity. And he was a man that loved people. And there's no telling how many thousands of young people he helped through school, gave scholarships. And there are young people working in his office in Atlanta today that started off being the clerk at a Chick-fil-A store. And now there are accountants or other workers in that office. A good name is to be chosen over great riches. More valuable than gold is a good name. So wisdom is more valuable than gold. A good name is more valuable than gold. And thirdly, the trial of our faith is more valuable than gold. Now we quickly understand that wisdom is more valuable than gold and a good name is more valuable than gold, but this, this lesson is kind of hard. The trial of our faith is more valuable than gold. And if you turn back in your Bibles to 1 Peter, the first chapter, and you begin reading about verse six, the scripture says, you rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to struggle in various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes through refi though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So those verses say that when you're tried, you go through a trial, and your faith is genuine. When Jesus comes back, you will be praised and honored when Jesus comes back. The trial of your faith is more valuable than gold. Jesus had something to say about that. Listen to these words. Jesus said, blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Blessing, that means fortunate, happy. When people persecute you, when you're faithful in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and people persecute you, people criticize you, people laugh at you, Jesus said, rejoice. Rejoice, because great is your reward in heaven. And Job, Job was a wonderful man, a man of God, a man of faith. And the devil was allowed to take almost everything from him. Most of his family, his servants, his possessions, and his own body was stricken with health issues. He went through all of that. And Job wrote this, when God has tried me, I will come forth as gold. 
the trial of our faith is more valuable than gold. Now, some of you know that, that I, I went to Mississippi State University to be a county agent. And I studied forestry and poultry and animal substantry and all those things. <clears throat> and then the Lord called me to preach, but I still got all of that in my blood. And there's one thing about forestry that illustrates this point on the trial of our faith. People that manage timberland and they set out pine seedlings, when they get up to a certain height, they begin to have what they call control burning. And about every five, six, seven years, they're going to have a control burning. The reason they do that is if they don't, all those pine needles and debris fall down to the ground, and over time it builds up pretty high depth. And if a fire gets started, bolt of lightning, careless cigarette, spark from a train starts a fire and you got all that debris and all those pine needles and the fire will go and it'll shoot up and it'll get up in the tops of those pine trees and it'll kill them but with a control burning they burn off all that stuff so that that doesn't happen a control burning they do it when there's not as much stuff and it doesn't harm the trees, it'll leave a little blackened space on the, on the bark of the tree. Now can't you just imagine those pine trees, if they could talk? <laughs> They'd say, why are you doing this? Why are you setting me afire? They wouldn't understand. And sometimes we don't understand why we go through trouble, problems, why we go through trials, suffering, difficulty. But the Bible says, if we stay by the faith, it's more valuable than gold because we will receive a great reward in heaven. Jesus said so. So wisdom is more valuable than gold. A good name is more valuable than gold. The trial of our faith is more valuable than gold. And fourth, a soul is more valuable than gold. A soul is more valuable than gold. Jesus said, for what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, focus your eyes on those words, gain the whole world. Think about that, the whole world. Everything that's in the world. If you owned all the houses in the world, all the businesses in the world, if you owned all the banks and all the money that's in the banks in the world, if you owned all the ships that sail the seas, all of them in the world, if you owned all the land in the world, all of it, and all the sea. If you owned everything in the world, it's not as valuable as your soul. Not as valuable as one single soul. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, if you go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, you find out that you were made in the image of God. Now, God is eternal. God's going to be here forever. And so will you. A soul lives forever. A soul never dies. And a soul is going to live somewhere after death on the body. Now, this body will die but the soul won't. 
This body will die, but the soul, the spirit of a person, will sail away to its eternal destiny. In the case of a Christian, heaven. In the case of a person who has not received Christ as Savior, hell. So if you win one soul to Jesus, you see what you've done. You've saved a soul for eternity. If you just win one soul to Jesus, you've saved a soul for all of eternity. One soul. Now what about your soul? Is your soul safe? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Now this is something you don't need to push off. This is something you don't need to wait about. This is something you don't even need to think about. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, your soul is lost. Your soul is going to be lost for eternity because that soul is going to live forever. So right now, today, this moment, at this moment, you need to humbly tell Jesus, hey, I'm a sinner. I need you. Come into my heart, and I will live for you forever. Right now, you need to do that. A soul is more valuable than gold. John Grissom is a Mississippi novelist. His book, he's nationally known as a writer and as an author. John Grissom tells about a friend, a college friend, who died at the age of 25. John Grissom and this friend graduated from Mississippi State University. And they didn't see each other for a few years. And then one day, John Grissom got a call from his friend. And the friend said, John, we need to get together. So they met for lunch. And it was then that the friend said, John, I have terminal cancer. I I'm not going to live very long. And John Grissom said at first he didn't believe it. Because 25-year-olds aren't supposed to have a terminal illness. But he said to his friend, well, what do you do? Uh, how do you handle it? What do you do when you know that you're not going to live very long? And the friend said, well, John, the first thing you do is you get right with God. That's the most important thing of all. You, you get right with God. And then you spend as much time as you can with the people that you love. And then you make things straight with everybody else. And he paused for a moment and then he said, John, you know, we ought to live every day like we just have a few days to live. And John Grissom said, I've never gotten over that. Hearing my friend who's dying say, we ought to live every day like we just have a few days to live. Would you bow your heads with me? Perhaps you know somebody that you know they don't know Jesus. They, they don't know the Lord. Right now in this moment, would you just pray for them? And if God gives you an opportunity, would you witness to them? Share Christ with them? Or maybe you are here today and you know that you have not asked Jesus into your heart. And right now, in the stillness of this moment, in a conversation just between you and God, you would say to the Lord, Jesus, I know I'm lost. 
I know I've sinned. Father, forgive me. I trust Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Would you do that right now? In a conversation just between you and God. Or perhaps you feel like you need to become a member of this church family. You need to come and, and be a part. The church belongs to Jesus. He said, it's my church. And he wants all of us to be a part of his church. So maybe you feel impressed to come and join this church family today. Now, dear Father, we commit this invitation to you. We know you are in control. And we ask you to touch our lives and move us in the direction you would have us to go. Perhaps to rededicate our lives, come to the altar and pray. Whatever you want us to do, Lord, give us a shove by your spirit. And we pray in the precious name of Jesus, amen. Would you stand together as we sing? to be together. Amen, church? I just want to point out a, a few announcements as we close our time together. Hopefully you received a bulletin when you came in. Of course, the, the big announcement is this evening. Now, we will not be having any uh, Bible studies tonight or any uh, children activities tonight because we are having one big activity as a church. Uh, we have our community fall festival tonight starting at 5 o'clock and be going from 5 to 7 o'clock. As you can see there in your bulletin, there's going to be uh, trunk or treating, free food, uh, games, uh, inflatable uh, obstacle course, all these great things, a cakewalk, and we would love for you to come and be a part of that. You may say, well, I don't think I'm going to get on the inflatable. That's okay. There's food. Amen, church? There's food. Um, but we would love for you to come and be a part of it. If you're a servant, just want to uh, kind of give a little housekeeping. 
Um, feel free to come anytime this afternoon, whatever time you need um, to set up whatever you are, are, are doing, whether it's a trunk or games or, or whatever it might be. And we just uh, are encouraging all of our servants to make sure things are ready by no later than 4.30, um, as we no doubt will have people start coming um, early, and so we want to make sure that we are ready for them um, by 5 o'clock, but make sure that you are ready by 4.30 um, for that. And I just want to encourage you with what Brother Ruffin just said at the end of his message, that a soul is more valuable than gold. This evening, there will be many a souls who will step foot on our campus. And you and I have the privilege and the opportunity to love them like Jesus and to point them to Jesus. Amen? And so let's come and be a part of what tonight holds. And let's be led by his spirit to do the work he's called us to. I um, just want to point out uh, Christmas choir will not be meeting tonight as well because of, of the uh, fall festival. Um, but specifically, I want to point out our women on mission are collecting items um, for the CPC. You see that specifically they're collecting hygiene items, um, but there are some diapers specifically, different sizes there that are, that are listed um, that you can donate. Um, feel free to drop those off at the church office. We'll hopefully have a box out there soon as well that you can uh, leave those. Um, they, they have a, a pressing need for these items, and so we want to see how we might can serve them in that way. Um, but other than that, that's all the announcements. Very short and sweet because we got one thing, and that's tonight, right? And so uh, I, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Jimmy to come and pray for us as we close our time together and hope to see you tonight. Let's stand together and swear. Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the privilege of being being in your house. We thank you for these wonderful songs that Brother Caleb led, led us to sing today, honoring our Lord Christ Jesus. And we thank you for Brother James's message that teaches us true wisdom and fear that you have Christ-like walk in our daily living. And we pray, Father, that you'll just give it in our hearts to stay in your word, to gain more of your wisdom, to help us in our walk of obedience, that we will do uh, live a life that is pleasing to you, a life that uh, offends the family and co-workers to see that we are true followers of Christ. And we pray, Father, before we leave for our fall festival tonight, as we reach out into our community and we pray for uh, a good attendance and we pray for the knowing of the Holy Spirit and we pray that we will be able to deliver the message that they need Jesus in their life and they need to be in a church every Sunday. We ask this, Lord, that you'll lead and guide us now as we leave Oakville. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs>